because he ignores all the lowercase letters in between. This is really handy because now you can think of the name of the class you want. You can go in and in a very really short way be able to pick that up and go directly to it. Now there's a really nice, uh, and I've, I've purposely not said a lot about uh, Emacs and VI in this talk, which are very, very powerful editors, but this facility basically exists in the Emacs world on a plugin called idu.el, and it's actually slightly more powerful than this because you can type any combination of letters and skip some letters and still be able to go to those, uh, to whatever the resource you're looking for is. So here's another really nice keyboard shortcut that people don't seem to use very much. It's technically a refactoring, but I use it as a way to be really lazy. I never want to type the left-hand side of an assignment statement ever again. I'd rather just let my IDE do that, and you can. You just type in what you want the right-hand side to be and hit the hotkey and introduce variable, and it'll type the left-hand side for you. And it figures out the type and all that other stuff for you. And it's going to choose a name, and it's at least as good at picking names for variables as I am. So I'd rather it just do it for me. But it's really smart, too, because it understands the context of the code that you're within. So if you're here and you type something like calendar get instance and introduce variable, you get a choice here of calling it either calendar or instance. It figures you might like either of those two names. And you create that variable. If you come along and create another calendar and offer uh, to, to choose a name for it, notice it chooses instance one because it knows there's already a variable named instance in the current scope, and it won't create one that clashes. So it's a lot smarter than I am because it understands the scope of the variables in, in sight, whereas I would have to think about that. Here's another really nice keyboard shortcut, which is uh, Command W in uh, IntelliJ and Alt Shift Up in Eclipse, escalating selection. One of the headaches is trying to learn a keyboard shortcut for select current word, select current uh, body of parentheses, select current line, select current block of code. You don't have to remember a bunch of different keyboard shortcuts to do that. You can use escalating selection. What I'm doing here is I'm hitting the exact same key over and over, and it just expands the selection one syntactic chunk at a time as I do that. So you hit it once, and you hit it twice, and then again, and then you get the, with the semicolon, you get the whole line, you get the whole block, and you get the block with the, the curly braces, and it just keeps escalating up one syntactic chunk at a time until you get whatever you want. This is a really nice way to select, oh, I need to select this whole method. Rather than taking the mouse and dragging over it, you just get somewhere in the method and start hitting this key until the whole thing's selected and you can do something with it. So one more of these go to symbol, which is kind of like the go to class thing that I showed you before. But this is, okay, I've got this variable in a class, and I don't remember the name of the class, but I remember the name of the variable, and I want to go do something with it. Go to symbol gives you that same kind of incrementally typing uh, behavior for fumble regardless of where that thing happens to live. So if I pick DB pool, notice that there are several different classes that have an instance variable named DB pool and the colors mean stuff as to what its scope is and I can easily go to that declaration for that variable in that uh, class that it lives in. So here are all these keyboard shortcuts. Uh, you can download this. So you, I'm not going to waste enough time to let you try to copy them down or anything, but you can easily download this talk, and those are all the ones that I just showed you. And it, actually, my advice is to go through that giant help file one more time for whatever editor you're using, even Outlook. Uh, go through that sh keyboard shortcut list one more time. Actually, for Outlook, it's only like one paragraph, so it'll be easy. Um, and find all those hidden little gems in there of things that's like, wow, I didn't even know it could do that, and copy those down to a separate piece of paper. Writing them down helps you remember it as well, and keep that as a cheat sheet. You don't have to remember the keyboard shortcut, you just have to remember that that behavior exists out in the world, and if it does, then you can very easily uh, go to your cheat sheet and then figure out how to use it. One more thing around acceleration is live templates. All major IDEs and coding text editors have live templates with parameter substitution, default values, and repeating values, et cetera. 
It's worthwhile to learn the language of your template engine. Uh, IntelliJ uses Velocity, which is an open source package in the Java world. And there's a really powerful text editor, a programmer's editor called TextMate is the Mac version, and eEditor is the Windows version. It uses Bash as its template uh, language internally. Eclipse has one too, but they have their own magical syntax for that. This is an example of the template editor in IntelliJ, which is using Velocity. And of course, everything that you put here like that, everywhere that shows up, when you type in that value, it, it replaces those values uh, there. A lot of developers use live templates, but they don't create their own enough, in my opinion. And my rule of thumb on a project says that every time you type something for the third time, templatize it. Make a template out of it so that you don't have to type the same stuff over and over. Because if you'll notice your workflow as a developer, you end up typing the same stuff over and over and over again. Whether it's some sort of JNDI, JNDI lookup or some sort of connection string or whatever it is, templatize that stuff as much as possible. Sort of related to live templates are key macro tools, which are live templates at the operating system level. And you can get this in Windows with either auto hotkey or one that I just recently discovered called Texter, T-E-X-T-E-R. Uh, and the one, there are a couple for the Mac, and one is called Text Expander, which is the one I use, and another one called Typinator. What this lets you do is record these kind of template snippets, but at the operating system level, not just your IDE. And so I use this for a bunch of different stuff. Uh, I have to type several words over and over, like the word um, selenium, which I can't spell. So I just let it do it for me. I have to type this as a conference series I speak at all the time. There are a bunch of command line snippets that I have in there to do stuff that I have in uh, live templates. So I have a little abbreviation set up for those things. And this last one is really important, the current date. It is stupid for you to have to tell your computer what date it is because it knows. All you have to do is l find a way to let it type it in there for you. And that's what Text Expander lets you do is you type DT dot and it'll expand to the current date. So I recorded this on 8-14-2008. It'll do the same for the current time and you can control where the cursor ends up and a bunch of other stuff like that. So the point of this is either in the operating system or your IDE, don't type the same commands over and over again. That's acceleration. Next, talk about focus. This is really important for developers because of this, your locus of attention. There's a, a really interesting book called The Humane Interface by Jeff Raskin where he describes your locus of attention. He was a human computer interaction designer. He did a bunch of early work on the Mac and then he became uh, independent and did a, a bunch of interesting innovative work. Um, to give you an idea of the kind of guy Jeff Raskin was, when he was born his name was J-E-F-F -F, and at some point in his adult life he realized that the extra F was inefficient and so he legally changed his name to remove that extra extraneous F. But he describes this locus of attention, which is the thing that has your focus right now, the thing that you're working on right now. And anything that happens outside your locus of attention breaks flow. Flow is this concept that every developer is familiar with. This is, there's actually an entire book written about this by this guy. And no, that's not a typo, that's actually his name. He's a, he's a college professor. And this flow state Everybody here is familiar with, it's that level of super deep concentration where time disappears and you are hyper productive when you're in that flow state. You have total concentration, almost tunnel vision on the thing that you're working on and time just seems to disappear. As a developer, you want to spend as much time in that flow state as you possibly can because that is by far your most productive time. And anything that happens to break flow, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to get back to the level of flow that you had before that distraction. And it has inertia. It's hard to get back into flow. That's why at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you think, oh, I need to get back to work on this thing, but it's just going to be so hard to get to that level of concentration, especially if you're going to be distracted 10 minutes later. So part of your job as a developer, both from an environmental standpoint where you work and from a computer standpoint, is to minimize stupid things that break your flow. Uh, 